गुड डे एवरी वन वेलकम टू लेक्चर लेवन ऑफ कंप्यूटर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड आर्किटेक्चर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर वी विल स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंट इंस्ट्रक्शन सेट आर्किटेक्चर दैट इज रिस्क फाइव एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग रिस्क फाइव इंस्ट्रक्शन सेट आर्किटेक्चर एंड इन द सब्सिक्यूंट lecture that is lecture number 8 we will discuss the compilation flow what are the various steps or what what is the complete flow that is followed in converting a program from a higher level language to a machine language so the focus of current lecture will be risk 5 instruction set architecture so let's start so basically risk 5 is a reduced instruction set architecture that was developed at uc berkeley basically the main aim of developing risk 5 was to support computer architecture research and education so at uc berkeley this isa was developed mainly for the purpose of research and education and this isa has one important feature and that is this isa is open source most of the instruction set architectures which are in the market for which the hardware has been developed for example x86 or arm these isas almost all isas that are available in the market they are proprietary isas that means they belong to some particular company so you cannot develop your own hardware for that particular isa you have to take the permissions from the from their owner from the owner of that particular isa then only you can use that particular isa however at uc berkeley this risk 5 was developed with the main aim of having it an open source so that it can be extensively used in research and education okay but with with time this isa risk 5 isa has developed to a level that currently industrial implementations are available of risk 5 so this risk 5 industries have taken this risk 5 isa and have developed hardware for the same this isa is open isa as i said and is freely available to both the academia and industry so both academia and industry can freely use risk 5 isa and basically risk 5 is not a single isa it has multiple isas or we can say it has multiple extensions so the isa has been developed in such a way that some bits are reserved such that you can use those particular bits to have your own isa or the isa which extend is the risk 5 so there are uh, i think 10 or 20 extensions available of risk 5 and why it has been named risk 5 basically there are previous versions of the risk that have been developed risk 1 risk 2 risk 3 risk 4 and risk 5 this is the fifth version we say of reduced instruction set computer so as i said this is open source and this isa follows load store architecture what is a load store architecture load store architecture is an isa in which or is an architecture in which all the operations are carried out on the values stored in the registers so whatever value we have to first bring that value into the register then we can apply our operation on that particular register the, as i have said that there are multiple versions of the risk 5 and there is the possibility of having extensions of risk 5 however in this particular course or in this particular lecture we will be discussing the basic the base integer 
ISA that is RV 32 I so this is risk 5 32 I risk 5 32 means that this particular ISA has 32 integer registers and it is mostly doing the integer operations okay so there are other versions of risk 5 also for example there is rv 64i so this particular uh, instruction set architecture this is also risk 5 this has the similar functionality as uh, uh, risk 5 32i however here we have 64 registers There is also another ISA RV 128i that has 128 registers and that is generating 128 bit addresses. Here it has 32 bit address. Okay. And we have another ISA which is for embedded devices, for example, which can be used for embedded devices, mobile phones, or some other embedded devices. So that is RV 32E. Basically, this has been derived from this particular uh, instruction set architecture. And in this ISA or in this extension, we have 16 registers and 16 bit addresses. There are some other extensions also. For example, RV32M is there. RV32A is there, RV32F is there. So there are multiple extensions of the RISC-5. But we will only discuss RV32I and by understanding this particular ISA, you can easily understand these extensions because they only differ, they have some minor differences in the, in the ISAs that you have to understand. But only focusing on this particular ISA will help us to understand all these extensions which are available. And let me clarify here that this RV32I can simulate all other extensions of RISC V. So it is possible that we can we can implement RV32M with RV32I. So this RV32I is very important. As I said, this, this RV32I can simulate all the other extensions. Okay, Except one extension that is RV32A. Let's not focus on this particular, but almost all other extensions, it can simulate those extensions. So this RV32I we will be discussing in this particular lecture. We will understand the complete instructions that are available in RV, RV32I. And we will try to, in, in the subsequent lectures, we will try to develop a processor which will support the instructions of RV32I. Okay. And I want to clarify here that this RV32I or other RISC-5 architectures, they are using tools complement representation. Okay. Moreover, each instruction is of 32 bits, 32 bits, or we can say four bytes. The memory is byte addressable. What is the meaning of byte addressable? Byte addressable means that every byte has an address. Okay. And also, uh, when we are saying that 32 bits, each instruction is of 32 bits, that means it occupies four bytes and memory is byte addressable. This is another thing that we want to clarify here that the RISC 5 32i, it stores the data in little Indian format. Okay. And after that, so 
these are some points related to RV thirty two I. It has thirty two registers, and each register is of thirty two bits. Okay, and these registers are named as X zero, X one, dash dash two, X thirty one. so these are 32 registers okay and this x0 is a special type of register that is always hardwired to zero that means whatever operation we will do on x0 the final result in x0 will be zero because it has been hardwired to zero okay and all the other 31 registers x1 to 31 these are general purpose registers general purpose registers means these can be used to hold any value and they are mostly used in the instructions to execute instruction uh, to execute operations on the data stored in these particular registers okay so apart from these 32 registers there is also one register which we called program counter and we all know that what is a program counter a program counter is a special type of register that is used to store the address of an instruction that is to be executed by the processor so since we have 32 registers so having 32 registers how many bits can be used to address these registers so for example if we have only four registers x0 x1 x2 and x3 so these are four registers how many bits can be used to address these four registers so that will be log of 4 log of 4 is 2 so two bits will be used to address these four registers uniquely so x0 will be 00 x1 will be 01 x2 will be 10 and x3 will be 11 since we have 32 registers here so how many bits will be required so that will be log of 32 and that is equal to 5 so 5 bits will be used to address these 32 registers so 00000 this address this register address will denote register x0 00001 will denote register x1 so we have a register file this is our register file and this register file has how many entries so we have 32 entries the first entry or the zeroth entry this is called x0 the first second entry x1 x3 and last one is x30 Okay, and how many bits will be used to address these locations, these thirty-two locations? As I said, these will be five bits. So, five bits will be used to address these registers in register five. And as I said, that X zero has been hardwired to zero. So, whatever operation we perform on X zero, the final result stored in X zero will be zero. so in rv32i we have 32 registers and one special register ca called program counter since in our previous lectures we discussed that we require some other registers also for example we require return address register we require stack pointer okay so we in rv32i we don't have separate return address register and separate stack pointer in a state we use one of the registers from the general purpose registers to store our return address and stack pointer you can use any register of your choice x1 to x31 any register you can use to store your return address and to store your stack pointer but the common standard that is followed is that x1 should store return address and x2 should store stack pointer okay
So, why we require 32 registers? What is the need of having 32 registers? Why can't we have simply 16 registers? So having large number of registers, we know that having large number of registers result in more power consumption. So this is the disadvantage. It, re it requires more power consumption. However, having large number of registers has many other advantages. For example, this can be extensively used for loop unruling, loop unruling and software pipeline. We will discuss these two strategies or these two uh, enhancements, loop unrolling and software pipelining in the process designing chapter, where we will discuss how loop unrolling and software pipelining helps us to improve the performance and how having large number of registers help us to make the extensive use of these two optimizations. However, in resource constraint applications or resource constraint embedded applications, for example, in case of uh, our mobile phones or our small, uh, let's say, variables, in those particular variables, power consumption is one uh, main disadvantage and one main scenario that we have to keep in mind to reduce the power consumption. And in those particular scenarios or in those particular applications, we use 16 registers. So for those particular, we have a separate extension of RV32i that is RV32e subset that is only using 16 registers. So for embedded applications, we have a different version of RISC-5. Okay. So, so for any particular uh, ISA, the main thing that we have to discuss is to discuss the instructions in that particular ISA. What are the different instructions? In our RV32i, in the base RV32i, there are 47 instructions. However, in this particular course and in this particular lecture, we will be discussing only 37 instructions. Those 37 instructions will be sufficient for designing the processor. And there are some other instructions which are required for to, for synchronization, for example, fence instruction and some other instructions. Currently, they are not of use to our, uh, our processor designing. So we will leave them for the advanced course. So we will only discuss 37 instructions of RV32i. Okay. So, uh, before discussing those instructions, let me summarize the different features of RV32i. First is the size of instructions. So, the size of every instruction is 32 bits. Second, registers. How many registers are there? There are 32 registers. Okay. Third, memory is byte addressable. How many bytes does an instruction occupy? A single instruction occupy four bytes. Okay. And size of every register? Size of every register is 32 bits. So each instruction is of 32 bits and the size of each register is 32 bits. So our RV32i, the instruction is in RV32i. Those instructions have been divided into six groups based on the format of instruction. Among these six groups, four are core formats and two are sub formats. Okay. Four core formats are one is R, which we called a register format. Another is I, which we called immediate format. 
another one is s store format another is u upper immediate format and two sub formats are one is sb format that is store branch format and the second one is uj upper immediate jump format okay these are the six formats of instructions in which we have divided rv32i instructions so how many instructions we have to discuss 37 instructions and what are the formats of rv32i there are six formats among these six formats four are the core formats r i s and u and two are sub formats s b and u j so our focus will be to discuss the instructions belonging to each format and what is the complete format in of instruction in each group okay the instructions have been divided into six formats based on the format of the instruction and the core formats are r i s and u and sub formats are s b and u g so r format instruction basically these are instructions those instructions which are using three registers so two registers will be used as source operands and one register is used as a destination mostly arithmetic and logical operations or logical instructions arithmetic and logical instructions belong to r format okay so r format instructions are those instructions which are using how many registers three registers three registers means two as source operands and one as destination register i format instruction these are instructions which have one operand as an immediate what is the meaning of an immediate what is an immediate immediate means the value of an operand value of an operand is in the instruction okay in register mode the value of operands is in the registers however in immediate format i format these are those instructions where one of the operand is listed as immediate okay so the other format is s format this format is used for store instructions what is a store instruction a store instruction is an instruction which takes the data from the register and puts that data into the memory and let me clarify here that i format includes the load instructions and what is a load instruction load instruction is an instruction that loads the data from memory into some register so s format is used for store instructions then there is sb format this format is used for branch instructions so b is for branch s is because this format is similar to s format and another format is u format that is used for upper immediates upper immediates means when we have a large size immediate we will discuss this in great detail so let's wait for that particular lecture and the last format is uj format and this format is used by jump instructions okay these are the six formats r i s and u are the core formats s b and u j these are sub formats okay in an instruction so we have an instruction okay an instruction has two parts we know that there is an op code and there are operands op code and operands so what is an op code op code determines the operation
आपको डिटरमाइन इज द ऑपरेशन एंड ऑपरेंट्स ऑपरेंट्स आर द लोकेशन ऑन विच वी हैव टू अप्लाई दिस पर्टिकुलर ऑपरेशन हाउ एवर इन आर वी थर्टी टू आई द टाइप ऑफ ऑपरेशन टाइप ऑफ ऑपरेशन इज डिटरमाइनड बाई थ्री एंटिटीज it is determined by three entities the first entry is op code the second entry we called func3 and the third entry we called func7 so these are the three entities which are embedded inside the instruction and three these three entities determine the type of operation so op code alone cannot determine the top type of operation it partially determines the type of operation however these three together determine the type of operation that this instruction has to perform so this instruction okay the instruction in rv 32i what are the components of this instruction so the components are first op code then func3 and func7 okay these three will determine the type of operation and what else will be there there will be operands and what are the possible operands the operands may be registers or simply images okay and what is the size of an instruction the size of instruction is 32 bits so this complete information has to be embedded has to be kept in 32 bits okay so let's discuss each format separately and what what are the locations of op code func3 and func7 and operands in each format so let's start with the first format that is r format instructions r format instructions so r format as i said r format instructions are those instructions which are using three registers among these three registers so two registers are source operands r source operands source means the operands on which we have to apply the operation and these source operands are determined are written as rs1 and rs2 so we will follow this notation we will write source1 as rs1 and source2 as rs2 so rs1 will be the register 1 okay rs2 will be register 2 and there will be one destination register and the destination register will be represented by rd let me write an example of r format instruction it is add x3 x4 x5 so what what is x3 x4 x5 basically these are the registers so how many registers are there 1 2 and 3 okay so this instruction belongs to r format okay and in this particular uh, particular instruction this x3 is our destination which we called rd okay x4 is our source operand 1 which we call rs1 and x5 is our second source operand which we called rs okay 
this is an example of a R format instruction. So basically, what is the format of an instruction? How this instruction is uh, is represented in machine format? So how many bits are there in the instruction? So let's say this is an R format instruction. Okay, how many bits are there? Thirty two bits. So it is of thirty two bits. So the complete information about the instruction is to be embedded in these thirty two formats. So in these thirty two for these thirty two bits, these thirty two bits are divided in following parts. The lowermost seven bits, zero to six. Okay, this is the opcode. So opcode is of seven bits. Okay, then the next five bits. That means bit number seven to eleven. This represents the destination register. So why five bits? Why we are having here five bits to represent the register? Because five bits can determine how many registers. Thirty-two registers, and we have only thirty-two registers. So five bits is sufficient to address any register. Okay. Then next three bits. From twelve to fourteen, this will determine func three. This is of thirty three bits. Okay. The next five bits will be source operand one from fifteen to nineteen. Okay. Then next five bits will be source operand two twenty to twenty four. And remaining seven bits, twenty-five to thirty-one. This will be func seven. Okay. So this is the complete format of R format instructions. And these three, func seven, func three, and opcode. These will be will determine the type of operation. Okay. What is the type of operation? And RS two, RS one. And R D, these are our registers, or we can say these are our operands, source operand and destination operand. Okay, so for all R format instruction, for all the R format instruction, this opcode is zero one one zero zero one one. So these are the seven bits. Zero one one zero zero seven one. So for all R format instructions. opcode has this value okay and as i said rs1 is source operand 1 rs2 is source operand 2 and rd is our destination and how many instructions are there for example here this is one instruction and this belongs to r format likewise we have total 10 instructions among 37 instructions Of RV thirty two I, ten instructions belong to R format. And what are those ten instructions? One is add, okay, subtract, SLL. I will I will define what is this LLL, SLT, SLTU, ZOR. S R L S R E or and so before describing these instructions each instruction let me first describe two fundamental terms that will be used one is the logical shift another is arithmetic shift what do we mean by a logical shift and arithmetic shift basically logical shift means let's say we have a register this is our register okay let's say some register r x4 okay. so every register is of how many bits 32 bits 0 to 31 these are our bits so we can shift bits in this register so there are two possible ways we can shift left Or we can shift right. 
okay let's say the value is this is the value contained in the register 10110010 let's say we have shifted left oh, sorry we have shifted right right by 2 bits okay so we are shifting right so these two bits 1 and 0 this will go out these two bits will go out okay now these remaining bits will come will shift by two bits and at the end two bits will remain vacant these two bits after shifting how many bits two bits and we shift so by shifting right two bits most significant two bits will remain vacant what will we fill in these vacant positions so we have to fill the vacant positions okay the one possible scenario is that fill zeros okay and another possible strategy is extend the sign extend the sign means if the last bit is 1 then all the other left bits okay or all the other most significant bits will become 1 if the left bit is if the most significant bit is 0 all the vacant bits will become 0 okay so one strategy is to fill all the vacant bits as zeros and another strategy is to extend the sign if we fill all the vacant bits as zeros this is called a logical shift however if we extended the sign to fill the vacant bits this is called a arithmetic shift okay so here we are discussing about the right shift so right shift has two parts we are shifting by x number of bits but after shifting x number of bits x most significant bits will re remain vacant and those vacant positions or those vacant bits can be filled with zeros if filled with zeros we will called right logical shift however if filled with the sign bit then we will called right arithmetic shift okay likewise we have a left shift left shift means we are shifting the bits to the left left means that most significant bits will go out okay and some bits in the least significant position will remain vacant and these remain vacant positions in the least significant position they are always filled with zeros okay we cannot extend the sign from least significant position we can only extend the sign from most significant bits so the only strategy available is to fill all the left all the vacant least significant bits with zeros so for left shift we have only logical left shift we have logical left shift and for right shift we have logical right shift and arithmetic right shift so i hope you understood the shift shift concept what do we mean by shifting the bits so we are shifting the bits let's suppose if we are shifting right by 2 bits that means 2 bits at the most significant position will remain vacant and we can either fill them by zero or extend the sign one is called a logical shift and another is called arithmetic shift so let's come back to our instructions as i said that there are 10 instructions which belong to the r format okay these 10 instructions what is what are the 10 instructions add sub sll add is adding let, let me write it here let's suppose x1 x2 x3 x1 x2 x3 so similarly for all there will be three registers add means add x2 and x3 place the value in x1 okay sub means subtract x3 from x2 and 
place the result in x1 sll means shift logical left shift logical left shift logical left means here that shift x2 shift the bits in x2 by the bits in x3 okay shift x2 by x3 let's say in x3 we have 2 2 means we have shift 2 bits in x2 2 bits in x2 why what kind of shift left shift and place the result in x1 final result please note that x3 is of what is the size of x3 it is of 32 bits however when finding the value how many bits we shift we only take the least significant 5 bits because using these 5 bits we can represent 32 number maximum 0 to 31 so 0 to 31 we can shift only from 0 to 31 because there are only 32 bits 0 to 31 we cannot shift by 40 bits let's say i am saying shift by 40 bits shifting 32 bit register by 40 bits makes no sense okay so in this register we are not using the complete value instead we are using the value represented by least significant 5 bits and that value will determine how many bits we have to shift in x2 okay this is left shift logical left shift this slt slt is set if less than what does this mean let's say it is x1 x2 and x3 slt x1 x2 x3 if x2 is less than x3 it will check this instruction if x2 is less than x3 then x1 will get value 1 however if x2 is not less than x3 then x1 will be 0 x1 is our destination so we are setting the value in x1 only if x2 is less than x3 otherwise we are keeping the value equal to 0 in x1 okay then there is sltu this is same as set if less than this one however while comparing x2 and x3 we have to assume that both these are unsigned values for example let me explain here let's say we have a, we have these two values Okay. If I assume these are unsigned, these are unsigned values. What is the value of this? What is the value of this? It will be there won't be any sign bit, so it will be one, two, four, eight. It will be nine, and this will represent four. Okay, this will be when we consider these as unsigned. Unsigned means there is no sign bit, so everything will be a value. however if we assume that these two are signed signed means the last bit represents the sign okay in this scenario we say that this last bit is 0 0 means it is a positive number so positive number so what is the value of this this will be 4 okay and this one the last bit is 1 1 means it is negative number so this is a negative number this one the so sign is negative now we have to find the magnitude how will we find the magnitude as i said the numbers are stored in twos complement format so while finding the magnitude of a negative number in twos complement we first find its twos complement so what is its twos complement it will be ones complement will be 0110 and twos complement will be 110 so the value is minus 7 okay so minus 7 this one is minus 7 and the second one is 4 so when we assume these are signed values then this is minus 7 and this is 4 however when we are assuming these are unsigned the upper one is 9 and the below one is 4 so slt 
this assumes that these values are signed values however when you, we have any wire in the instruction u u means that assume that these two values are unsigned and compare these two values okay then we have zor zor means zor x2 and x3 and the final result should be stored in x1 then we have srl srl means shift right logical shift right logical okay this is sra shift right arithmetic and then we have r r means r to registers x2 and x3 and place the value in x1 and we have and and means bitwise and of x2 and x3 place the result in x1 so these are our 10 instructions and for all these 10 instructions what is the value of op code op code is 0110011 okay what will be the value of rd rd will be in all these uh, all these uh, instructions what we have assumed rd rd is x1 x1 means 00001 this is x1 means 1 okay so rd will be 00001 for all these instructions okay and rs1 rs1 is x2 so x2 will be 00010 and rs2 is x3 so what is x3 00011 now which one is remaining func3 is remaining and func7 okay func3 how many bits are for func3 these are three bits for add it is 000 for sub it is 000 okay add and sub they both have same func3 000 and 000 for sll we have 0 01 for slt we have 010 for sltu we have 011 for zor we have 100 srl 101 SRA is also one zero one, or is one one zero, and and is one one. Okay. From here you can see that add and sub have everything common. Op code is same. This is same. Func three is same. RS one is same. RS two is same. Okay. Similarly for SRL and SRA they also have same entities. okay but for other instructions this func3 will differentiate them from each other for example if func3 is 011 that means the instruction is sltu if the func3 is 110 that means the instruction is or okay and what is remaining func7 for all these instructions func7 is 0000000 70 okay except sub and sra for these two instructions func7 is 0100000 okay so i hope you got it that how many instructions are there there are 10 instructions in r format for every instruction what is the op code op code is 0110011 okay rd is depending upon the destination register rs1 depends upon the source register source 1 register this depends upon the source 2 register now remains func3 and func7 func3 is 000 for add same for sub 001 for sll 010 for slt 011 for sltu 100 for zor 101 for srl 101 for sra 110 for or 111 for and and func7 is all zeros all seven zeros for all instructions except sub and sra for sub and sra it is 0100000 why we are using this different func7 for sub and sra it is because to differentiate sub from add and to differentiate sra from 
एस आर एल बिकॉज दे हैव सेम फंक थ्री वन जीरो वन एंड वन जीरो वन एंड हियर ऑल्सो जीरो 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 एंड जीरो 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 टू डिफ्रेंशिएट सब फ्रॉम एड वी यूज फंक थ्री फंक सेवन जीरो फॉर एड एंड जीरो वन जीरो 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 फॉर सब सिमिलरली गोज फॉर एस आर एल एंड एस आर एल सो लेट मी गिव सम एग्जाम्पल इज हियर सो लेट से वी हैव एन इंस्ट्रक्शन एड एक्स and another instruction is sub x2 x1 x4 okay let me encode these instructions we have to learn encoding what is the meaning of encoding encoding means representing these instructions in binary basically they are in assembly okay we have to represent these instructions in binary so this will be for add how many bits 32 bits and this will be for sub similarly how many bits 37 bits for both these instructions these last 7 bits what does these last 7 bits represent opcode and for both these instructions opcode is 0 what is the opcode opcode is 0110011 so here also 0110011 then remains how many bits Uh, which one is the next next is destination so what is the destination in add destination is x3 okay x3 will be 00011 so 00011 and in case of sub what is the uh, destination 2 it will be 00010 00010 then comes the uh, what is after 3 func 3 okay func 3 what is func 3 for add it is 0 0 0 what is func 3 for sub 0 0 0 then comes the source register 1 what is the source register 1 in add x5 so x5 will be 0 0 1 0 1 and here it it is x1 so 0 0 0 0 1 the source register One, uh, source register two. What is the source register two here? Seven. So it will be zero zero one one one. So here zero zero one zero zero. Okay. Then remains the last one. That is func seven. What is func seven for add? It is zero 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 zero. And what is func seven for sub? It is zero one zero 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 zero. Zero. So this is the 32-bit instruction that represent this particular instruction, this add, and this is 32-bit instruction that represents the subtract instruction. So I hope you can now encode any possible instruction, which any possible instruction which belongs to the R format. So any possible instruction you can encode it. so your job is to do the encoding of following instructions let me write some instructions here so s r l x1 x2 x3 s r a x4 x5 x8 do the encoding of these two instructions okay this will be your homework so this is all about the r format instructions so this was the format of r format instructions you have to remember this r format r format and in the next lecture we will discuss other formats till then goodbye